Good morning, Devils fans. It is July 18th, and today will probably be a fairly light episode as free agency is still mostly at a standstill, and there is not much else happening around the league or with the Devils, but I do have a few things of note to cover. What might cause some movement uh, with free agency is the upcoming arbitration date deadlines. For those that aren't aware, players that filed for arbitration, basically negotiations with the team with a third-party arbitrator, to come to a reasonable contract for them are coming up. And it's going to be starting on July 20th, but there's three particular dates that really pertain to the Devils. First up uh, is probably the lesser of the three, and that's going to be Samsonov, whose arbitration date with the Maple Leafs is coming up on the 21st. Uh, reason I make this one of note is he is a goalie out there on the market. This might cause things to get rolling, at least in the goalie sector, a little bit. Uh, but he is obviously not one of the big names, not one of the ones that is rumored to be moved. But he gets a new contract, possibly helps set the market. Leafs are in dire, dire cap trouble. So getting him signed, they'll have a clearer idea of their cap situation. And possibly some movement comes from that. The other two are much more pertinent to us. And that's going to be the end of the month on July 30th with Swayman and Boston Bruins. This is obviously a big name we've talked about a whole bunch of a goalie we are possibly interested in in acquiring from Boston due to their cap situation as well. Depending on where he comes in, it is possible either he or Olmark are moved because of that. And then between Samsonov, Swayman, I believe that's really the current holdup on the goalie market in free agency. So that possibly then also brings in Hellebuck and then the other free agent goalies as everyone's just trying to figure out where the market lies as these guys are all done. The last name uh, is kind of paired in with Swayman for why we care, and that's going to be Trent Frederick, also the Boston Bruins, who is August 1st. Again, this is because it gives Boston a much clearer idea of their cap situation. Can they afford to keep both of their goalies or not? And if not, do we move in to try and acquire one of them? So definitely keep an eye out on those dates. As we approach each of them, I'll be bringing them up in these videos again or updating as we move along depending on how things unfold. Now for more specific devil news. Uh, first up, uh, maybe pertinent, maybe not, uh, but that's going to be Andre uh, Sen Seneca. Uh, Andre Seneca. Uh, he's an NCAA undrafted 22-year-old. Biggest thing of note about him that everyone brings up is he is a 6'5", 215-pound winger. So we know size on the wing is a sought-after commodity in the NHL right now, part of which has always been, uh, especially for the Devils that generally are considered on the smaller side, but really that's just... A couple of guys up front. Generally speaking, we're actually a pretty big team, especially on the backside of the defense. Uh, and even up front, I mean, we're no smaller than the Tampa teams that won their back-to-back -back cups. Uh, we're definitely smaller than, say, uh, Colorado Avalanche. So I'm not too big on needing size, but if you wanted to find someone that possibly can fill that niche, possibly in a fourth-line role down the road, it could be Andre. So Devils uh, have shown interest in them. They actually spoke to Andre Seneca about returning, whether or not that's going to be, again, as an invitee at the next uh, camp next year, or if they're going to draft him as an overager if he is still eligible. Uh, I believe he is actually going to be pretty close to aging out of that if he is not already. Uh, but when he does graduate college, he will be, a, and as he is now, he is free to sign with any team. But he was invited to camp with us last year. He could not attend because he came down with mono. Uh, but we brought him back again, and he definitely caught some eyes of management and our team. So definitely keep an eye out on him. He's probably a name we'll be hearing again. Is he with us down the road? We'll see, but definitely someone to keep an eye out on. The only other real piece of news to come out was that The Rock is getting a new food and drink vendor. I know this is uh, actually quite contentious among a lot of Devils fans, wanting much better concessions at The Rock. Uh, food, drink, basically the whole experience. And it sounds like they are definitely going to be upgrading in this department. Now, I go to The Rock at least a few times a year. Since I had my kids, it's obviously fallen off, and especially with COVID. But before that, I was going to multiple, multiple games, even traveling almost the two hours here from South Jersey, there and back, uh, which is busy, basically the biggest determinant. If I was closer, I'd probably be at almost every home game if I could. But that being said, I haven't gone to too many of the other stadiums around the area. I've been to Wells Fargo once. I've never been to MSG or anything there uh, outside of, you know, using it for its main purpose, the train station. So I don't have really a, a bar to gauge the potential against, you know, other surrounding venues. But from what I hear from people that do attend fairly often and go to other local spots, 
the food is considered poor. Uh, you know, I definitely, uh, just in my experience, I do wish there was a wider variety that was there. They were expanding in recent years, especially since COVID, which was nice, uh, especially with like uh, the Players' Choice food spots that were changing uh, over and over, which was really cool. I hope they do continue that. But it sounds like they're going to go with more Jersey food fare uh, and just a lot more options in general. I was mostly a burger or like a chicken fingers guy. Uh, they were pretty good. You know, I just expected a stadium food, nowhere near worth the price you were paying for them. But, eh, you know, you expect that kind of in today's day and age. Obviously, now, in my opinion, though, the fries were pretty horrid. Uh, if those, if they just improved the fries, if that was the only thing they improved and made the fries banger and everything else stayed the same, I'd probably be pretty happy. So, Devils, if you're definitely totally listening to this, improve the fries. It's going to be the best thing that you can do. But really, across the board, if we had a lot, a lot of nice variety in food, especially more local-ish cuisine, Jersey's a big melting pot. We have the full array of options here. Go in on that, bring in people, really make it a full experience going to a Devils game, not just the on-ice product, but the food. People love to eat and drink, bring that game up. Uh, and that's really going to cover it. Uh, there's nothing else really happening right now. We're in the off season. We're not even in the real dog days of it. Uh, so it's uh, we're going to slowly get there. Uh, what I'm probably going to look to do in the next coming days is actually start up a player spotlight series where I'm going to go player by player on our roster and just do a full deep dive on them, whether it's uh, just their playing history, my views on them going forward, contract situation, basically anything and everything I can think to discuss about said player, I'm going to be looking to do that. So if news stays as it is, especially the next couple of days before we get into this arbitration dates, I'll start that up. If anything big comes up in the meantime, I will obviously cover that and then get back into the player series as we trudge along here in this long, long all season before uh, Devils Hockey actually finally starts. Uh, so that's really going to do it. Like I said, light episode today. Uh, so I hope you all enjoy the rest of your wonderful, wonderful day here. Uh, and I will see you all tomorrow morning. Let's go Devils.